Hello and welcome to the Little Shy Livestream. Tonight I'm going to be doing a green screen ponies tutorial. It's actually a kind of funny story. The last time I attempted this, my desk was over there and I only had one monitor, so it's funny how things change over time. But uh, the last time I did this tutorial, I really failed. I um, the problem was I tried to I tried to rush it. I tried to plan it all out in advance and like script basically script the thing. And you can't really script something that's complicated. So I'm just gonna take my time and. Uh, walk you through how I basically, I, I do green screen ponies, that's the essence of it. For you professional editors out there, I probably only need to say one word, and that is keying. So if you know what I mean, you probably already know how I do it then. It's really a simple matter of keying and in individual colors, doing a couple filters to touch things up, and that's really it. But uh, for those who want the details, uh, this will be the clip that we're doing. It's a very simple shot because she's not moving around or anything. So this is actually all done. I already did it in advance just so I could uh, make this a little easier. So what, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to start from scratch. And also, those of you watching on YouTube, the project files are in the description. So let's go ahead and start. I'm going to make a new a new file entirely. Okay, so what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to open up the, uh, the episode source file. Just drag it to the timeline. And you want to say yes to this usually. So pay attention, make sure the frame rate's correct and all that. But for now, yes, we do want to just use the original. So there's the clip. First things first, we isolate Applejack. I'm just uh, looking for the one frame where the camera stops moving entirely. So it's right there. So I'm going to split the timeline, move ahead a little bit. And here we go, it's going to be a wipe from the left. Just before that wipe touches her, yep, right, right about there is where we're going to cut it off. So then I'm clicking the episode on the timeline and making it a composite shot. You can just name this whatever. Um, I forget what's named in the project file that in the link I shared, but uh, I'm just going to name it main because it's, it's a horse pun. Yay, horse puns. So now we have an isolated clip of just her growling. So uh, first things first, and let me get myself in a little more room here. First things first is I'm going to rename the episode source to uh, Fur Fill. Because like I said, it's, it's a simple matter of keying in colors one by one. And uh, the first color I usually start with is the fill color. So that once you have this, uh, it's a hue and RGB cube. Excuse me. Hue and RGB key. And uh, you just uh, select the color. Select the RGB mode and invert. So it's basically only selecting that color. I'm going to adjust sensitivity so it's just her fur fill. It's okay if there's a little bit. Or, actually, I'm not even built on the live stream, but there's a little bit around the edges. That's fine for now. We have, I have some tips and tricks to smooth things out later on. So yeah, the next I'm gonna do for outline. And um, I'm basically duplicating layers. So just control C, control V, unselect that so the layer is no longer active and then I can zoom in and select her outline here. And it's the same idea. I just do this over and over. Except I'm gonna adjust the tolerance a little bit. Basically you want it to be as sensitive as possible without actually uh, any other colors coming into play here. Like right there, I think 7 or 8% is where the project file was saved. Oh, and uh, something really quick is in the uh, Hue and RGB queue. Ugh, Q, I don't know why I keep saying Q. It's Hue and RGB key. Ugh, excuse me. You can also select the view matte effect. If your layer is on top, it'll basically turn whatever that layer is selecting to white and everything else to black. So actually, that came in handy here. As you can see, the main outline is also uh, bringing her fur color. And it's usually a good idea to keep each and every single individual layer to a separate color, but I, I believe if I remember correctly, in this case I have to keep this her fur because uh, I'll lose quality if I don't. See, I might be able to get away with that, but uh, I might as well just keep her fur fill because her fur fill is so different from her fur outline, and the outlines is really where you got to keep the details. What's next? Oh yes, her hat. Well, what's cool is with green screen ponies is since you're keying in individual colors, if for example you don't want her hat, you just don't key it in. Like you can. Uh, you know, little tricks like that will help a lot because if she's uh, partly out of frame, it might not work on some clips. But for the sake of this example, let's keep her hat. So I'm naming this layer Hat Fill. And in case I didn't explain it earlier, I'm just copying and pasting the same layer over and over. See, this one's blending a little bit with the background there. Just lower the tolerance until it works. It's, look, it's coming together, as you can see. <laughs> it always looks a little bit creepy when their uh, eyes aren't filled in yet, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay, next up is the eyelashes. I'm gonna name this layer just black because that's the color of the eyelashes obviously. Select the color. One way that you can tell if you have good footage or not is by selecting a color like black or white and then opening up your color wheel and if it's absolute black that means you've got a good quality episode that's really well compressed. If it's kind of like off just the slightest bit even if it's just like by one number value uh, that could be a sign that you either selected it wrong or that the video wasn't well compressed. 
And obviously since it's black, I have to change the background color. Something to note is that in HitFilm Ultimate, when you change the background color, it only changes it for your view. The render won't be green. Okay, there, that'll work. So we got really sharp edges on those eyelashes now. Next up, just gonna copy that layer as per usual, rename it white. And now I'm just gonna select the white the white eye color. We're almost done with the, the boring keying now. Then we're gonna get into boring masking. <laughs> Yay! Okay, I'm using the view matte effect to see how that came in. That came in really good. It's also including her freckles, which saves us a whole nother layer. And since uh, the reason we do individual layers for every color key is because when you key something in, you're inverting it and you're just keeping that color. If you were to add another color key to it, it doesn't have any information to pull because the first color key deleted everything except for that one color. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but since we're now we're doing a mask, we can have all of our masks in one simple layer. So the first mask I have here is going to be her rump and her just her general body area right here. This, so this is basically including her cutie mark and her hair tie thing right there. Thankfully, Applejack is... Hold on, why is it not working? <laughs> I did something wrong. Oh, silly me. I forgot to delete the original RGB key. So basically, you start off with an original original layer, and then you add the mask. So as you can see, she doesn't move around a whole lot, so we're just going to keep the mask as is. Of course, next is her eyes. You could try keying in her eyes, like every eye color one by one, which as you can see here, there's quite a few colors in there. Especially when they're it's close together and really small, they blend together, it gets really complicated. Usually, you can just key in the white outline and then mask the eyes. It's not usually too big of a problem. Especially here, because she's not moving at all, basically. So I'm just going to quickly draw this around. So as you can see, the clip is pretty much done. But it's not quite its not quite to the perf level of perfection that I attempt to achieve. It's, uh, as you can see, if I zoom in far enough, I don't know if you can see it in the live stream or not, but, you know, it's a lot of uh, missing artifacts and rough edges. So here's where things get complicated, and here's where things uh, got really hard to explain in the last tutorial, which is why the tutorial's unlisted now. Hopefully this tutorial I can do it right. Basically, you're going to select all of your layers. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Everything looks pretty complete. Select all your layers and turn that into a composite shot. I'm just going to name this Layers 1. So basically, the, the, the concept of a composite shot basically means it's like the equivalent of if you rendered everything out and re-imported it, but this saves you the time. So now everything we just did is inside this layer, one layer right here. It's titled Layers 1. So now that we have all of those individual color layers, which as you can see here, we have all those into one layer, it's easier to apply an effect to all of them at once. So we're going to start off with the matte cleaner effect. Uh, what this does, if I can explain it properly, it softens the edges and fills in the holes. That's, that's it in a nutshell right there. If I zoom in far enough, you can see there's some uh, holes where her fill color and her eye color they kind of blend together, and the software doesn't pick up those pixels because they're a different color than what you told it to select. So the Mac Cleaner, I'm just going to start off with a smooth level of 5 pixels. Immediately you can see the changes, is that the outline is smoother, and the fill has all the holes filled in, basically. So this is how you get your rough outline of the uh, green screen pony. After this we'll have to do uh, a technique to use this as a mask to the original footage. It's kind of like working backwards almost. So actually, we've got to go back to the original composite shot and copy the black layer for the eyelashes because the smooth effect kind of ruins the eyelashes a little bit. If I zoom in far enough again, you can see the big difference that when I put those, yeah, when I put the black there, the eyelashes definitely look a lot better. So now that we have th this composite shot, uh, select both those layers and make that into an yet another composite shot. I'm just going to name this layers two. So now we're getting like inception here. We have a composite shot within a composite shot. And we're soon gonna have a composite shot within a composite shot within a composite. <laughs> you get the idea. So uh, now what we wanna do is we wanna go to original, our original composite shot of all of our original co color key layers. Just copy one at random. Go back to the main composite shot, paste it there, and delete whatever's in it. So it's just like an original back, back where we started basically. And I'm gonna rename this just plate. But what we wanna do now is we wanna disable this one this one with all the ugly holes and whatnot. Once we disable that and re-enable the original plate, we go up here and we search for the effect called the Set Matte Effect. Could be called something else in After Effects, I'm not really sure, but uh, basically what this is doing is it's telling this layer to use another layer as a mask. So now you can see right off the bat, those holes were all that were uh, filled in with black. Since, uh, hold on, let, hold on, let me show you an example. This is what we were working with. Just for the sake of example, I'm putting a Mac Cleaner in there, and I'm going to, uh, oops, wrong one, just a second. The View Matte Effect. This is what the software is seeing. 
it's not it's just seeing the alpha alpha being transparency it's not seeing any color it's just seeing white and black and everything in between so actually we can leave that white and black like that and we just re-enable the original plate and that's what it's dealing with um, I think I explained that properly basically you combine all your layers into one composite shot and you uh, add uh, another plate just the original clip over top of that and you uh, disable the other one and then use it as a mask see this is the hardest part to explain I, I did a terrible job last time I hope I did a little better this time now uh, obviously there's a lot of touching up to do for example I'm gonna go right up into here and uh, add another Mac cleaner and do about two pixels of crop just to fix the edges a little bit and uh, basically that's it